Hi all, Craig and Latte here. It's that time again where I bring you my tips, facts, or experience that you may or may not find helpful. In case you hadn't heard, Blizzard has put out a blue post stating that Threads of Fate is being removed with Dragonflight. This change is to take effect with the other leveling changes that will go live with pre-patch Phase 2 set for the 15th and 16th of November. Threads of Fate, as the blue post states, was a way to help alleviate the linear path of Shadowlands leveling, and this is because that linear path is extremely restrictive. Threads of Fate allowed players to move freely between quests of the four zones in the Shadowlands instead of being required to quest in a specific zone order, but it was much more beneficial than that, as it was also meant as the alt-friendly alternative for players who had already put in the time on their main characters. Perhaps the largest alt-friendly benefit of opting into Threads of Fate is that doing so auto-completed the zone campaign questlines on that alt so that you did not have to quest through them just to have access to the Covenants or any of their endgame activities. Since a vast amount, if not all, of the expansion is locked behind this Covenant access, this was a very important feature for anyone with more than one character. To complement this, there are a handful of other alt-friendly benefits. Some of these include choosing a covenant right away instead of doing so after completing the entire story campaign. This is what lets your alts obtain renown early. Speaking of, easy renown gains while leveling. Even more so if you had unlocked the Broker Mark of Distinction item by having a character hit renown 80 at least once. This is very important if you intend to collect Covenant items with your alts so that you won't spend as much, if any, time at max level getting renown. Easy reputation gain with the four main zone reputations. These are the Wild Hunt, the Undying Army, the Ascended, and the Court of Harvesters, all of which have Paragon mounts that you may want to farm for with alts. You also would receive quite a bit of anima during this, especially if you completed the zone-wide aid quests, looted treasures, hit up rares, did world quests along the way, and did that fun trick of swapping all four covenants and using the Broker's Mark of Distinction in each one to get a quick boost of 4k anima. Gold from vendoring the great amount of quest gear and mob trash stockpiled quick as well, averaging between 8 and 10k thanks to it all being a higher average item level though naturally this will decline with time as the expansion gets older. And of course, this option was just faster, as it had a completion range of 3 to 5 hours versus the storyline's 8 to 10 hours. A couple of these benefits, such as the rep and gold, can also be obtained in the storyline as well, but at a far slower pace, and access to the next zone is dependent on completing the previous, as you cannot move on until you're a certain level and have completed that zone's campaign. This is why Threads of Fate had such an appeal to frequent levelers. With all that in mind, plus anything else I may have forgotten to mention, you may be wanting to use Threads of Fate on any alts you want to farm Shadowlands collectibles with, or freely experience the zones at your own pace in future expansions. However, with that choice being removed, how could you do this? Calling attention to the last line of the first paragraph in the blue post, it states that players currently in Threads of Fate can continue through it, but the option will not be available for any new characters. Fortunately for us, this means we will not be awkwardly kicked out of Threads of Fate if we do not finish it before Phase 2 of the prepatch arrives. So, this means that if you currently have any characters who are between the levels of 48 and 59 who have not activated Threads of Fate, you can do so now before Phase 2, and you will still have access to it on those alts at any point in the future. Even if you have no intention of using the aforementioned benefits, doing this could allow you to skip needing to do the storyline just to have access to the Four Covenants and all of the content locked behind them. Now, to do this on fresh alts, simply go into the Shadowlands by doing or skipping the Maw intro, if you like, and then activating Threads of Fate when you were approached about it as soon as you enter Oribos. That is enough to get you locked in. If you are partially through the storyline, you can go turn on Threads of Fate by going to the Fate Scribe here on the outer rim of Oribos. 
And as a reminder, you cannot turn off Threads of Fate once you've activated it because it auto-completes all of the campaign quests. So make sure that you do want to do this. Now obviously, this does not mean you have to level there right away or at all. This is just to have it unlocked so that you can use it on that alt for whatever your purposes are at a later date before you can't get access to it anymore. And as a bit of a warning, I have a feeling this system will still partially shut off at level 60 as it does now since this is not a feature Blizzard is updating. What that means is while the side quests will still be available, you will no longer get renown and such at level 60 from the Threads of Fate activities, such as the zone-wide aid quests, bonus objectives, and so on, even if you still have them available. You will be forced to farm renown through max level content for the expansion. However, unlocking it would still not be pointless even if you decide to level that alt to 60 somewhere else before returning to use Threads of Fate. If you want to take advantage of those benefits I listed earlier, then you'll want to level here during that 48 to 59 range, or at least until you feel those benefits have been met. If you don't care about the alt catch-up benefits like rep, green, and an anima, then at the very least, unlocking this now will let you skip the storyline on that character, like I mentioned earlier, and get you right to the endgame content for later farming, even if you level to 60 and beyond somewhere else. And there we have it! If you think I've missed information, or you want to request I do a specific guide, let me know in the comments below. Even if I don't answer you, I just might add your idea to my list. As always, thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte.